Hi, my name is Myrthe and today I'm going to make this wildflower birthday card for my grandmother. For the background I'm ink blending the colors Tethered Rose, Victorian Velvet and Aged Mahogany with my mini distress inks. You can use any color combo for the background that you like. You can create a sky, a sunset or even a rainbow, whatever color combo you have in mind. However, I decided to go with these pink shades because my grandmother would love them. I think Victorian Velvet would be your favorite color. For the ink blending I'm going back and forth between the colors. This way I get a smooth blend between them. In the left corner you can see the colors that I'm using. So I'm gonna turn on some music and then I'll meet you in the end. Welcome back! Now that I'm happy with the ink blending, I wanted to create some more interest for the background. I'm doing that by splattering some drops of water. The water will react with the ink underneath it. So when you use a dry paper towel on the water droplets, the ink will come off and you'll get these great soft spots in your background. Now it's time for stamping the wildflowers. Since it's a very big stamp, I'm using my stamping tool for this. This way, I can stamp the image over and over again so I can get a good impression. I don't know the brand of the ink that I'm using here. I have this ink pad since I was, I don't know, 8 years old or something? So I don't remember the brand and I can't see it on the package as well. <laughs> However, it will do the job, but it's a bit difficult because there's a plastic border around it. That makes it a bit difficult to ink up a big stamp such as this one. So I have to stamp it over and over and over again. But in the end, I'll get there. That the stamp didn't come all the way down the card. However, this isn't a problem since I'm going to cover it up with some corrugated cardstock. Before adhering it down, I tear off the border of the cardstock. This way, I won't have a straight line, which I like better for this card design. For adhering the cardstock down, I'm using my Nouveau Deluxe glue, which is a liquid glue, so I can move it around a bit till I'm happy with the placement. Once I'm happy, I can cut off the excess with my scissors. For the sentiment, 
I used this happy birthday die to cut out the word birthday out of some silver glitter cardstock. However, I thought it didn't stand out enough against the background. That's why I decided to cut out the word again, but this time from some black cardstock. This way, I hope to create some sort of a shadow behind the silver sentiment, so it would stand out a bit more. I did that by gluing down the black sentiment first and put the silver one on top, but slightly offset. This way, you get a black border on one side of the sentiment, just like a shadow. Here I also use my Nouveau Deluxe glue. This helps me move it around a bit because it's quite difficult to put it in the right place at once. Here I want the sentiment strip with the word happy to make it happy birthday. I only didn't have a sticker with the word happy and I also didn't have a stamp. Of course I could have made a sentiment strip on my laptop and just print it out, but I was too lazy for that. So I decided to just write it down. It's hardly to see, but that's because I used an embossing pen, which has clear but very sticky ink. This way I could use my white embossing powder on it. I tap off the excess and then I can heat it with my heat tool until it's completely melted. I used this piece of paper so I could easily put the excess back in the jar. Now I cut the work down to a small strip. To be honest, I regret my laziness because it would have looked way better when I just printed the sentiment out instead of my terrible handwriting. Here I decided the card needed some more texture. I want to wrap some thread around the card, but before I do that, I cut off a piece and tried to tie a little bow. I do that because it's easier to wrap the thread around the card first and glue the bow on afterwards than that I tie the bow right on the card. You'll see what I mean in a sec. So here I cut off a piece of thread that's long enough to wrap twice around the card. And now you can see that instead of tying a bow, I can just tape the ends of the thread down with some tape on the back of the card. Now I can wrap it around and the thread will stay right in place and nobody will ever see the back. To make it look like a tight bow, I want the threads to come together at the place where the bow will be. And for that I'm now just using some glue. Here I just hold the threads in place with my scissors so I can speed up the drying process with my heat tool. In the meanwhile, I can glue down my sentiment strip. And now I can also glue down my little bow. I do that with just a drop of glue. After that, I'll have to set it aside so it can dry for a while. I adhered it down to a standard pre-folded card. And now you could actually say it's done, but I just wanted to add some gems here and there. Now the card is finished. I hope you enjoyed watching and here are some close-up photos of the card. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more, please follow me on Instagram. See you next time. Bye!